Today I'm here with Charo and I'm really excited for us to talk about personal brand. Um, first of all, let me say hi to you, Charo. Great to have you here. Hi, George. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm going to just, uh, Charo, I'm going to read your bio for the audience so that um, they can understand what your background is and then we'll get into this topic of how can we be more visible in a noisy online world. So, um, Charo works with holistic practitioners, coaches, and other heart-centered solopreneurs who feel invisible in today's online world. As a certified coach and personal branding mentor, she helps her clients to clarify and communicate what makes them different, unique, so that they get noticed by the people who value their work with integrity, authenticity, and heart. Her unusual background as an architect and her studies in depth psychology allow her to bring a unique blend of down-to-earth and sustainable strategies with soul-based techniques like dream work and archetypes into the work of personal branding. Charles, great to have you here. Thank you, George. Yeah. So, well, let's start with why do you think it's important uh, to, to, to have to differentiate yourself, I guess, in, um, in today's online environment? Yeah, well, let me begin by asking you a question, if that's okay with you, George. Yeah, sure. I know you're a sci-fi sci -fi fan as I am. <laughs> yes. So I'm pretty sure you'll know the answer, okay? So, uh, well, and let me know, let me share with everyone, everybody, I have a mind map here, so I will be taking a look at my notes so I don't get yeah, good, good. derailed on my thoughts. Good idea. So the question is this. What is something that Harry Potter can do Two hobbits that I know of can do it too. And A.G. Wells was, well, wrote a book about a character who could do this too. I you know, give you, some you, know, you, know <laughs> you know what's interesting? I, I was going to say, I actually um, identify hobbits and uh, 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 Harry Potters as fantasy rather than sci-fi. Yes, I know. But I'm, a, I'm a very specific. With... <laughs> so I would say, I would say, I would say uh, be invisible. Right, invisibility. Okay. That, that was yes. my guess. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's why I added the H. E. Wells with the Invisible Man. That's sci-fi. Ah, uh, you know, I didn't actually connect that because H. E. Wells, I usually think of War of the Worlds, but yeah. <laughs> oh, the Invisible Man. He wrote that one too. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So invisibility is so cool for a, a book or for a movie, right? Yes. But it's not so fun when you're trying to be seen and found by people who need your services mm. and, and you're writing content as, as you teach so well and you're posting ads on Facebook or somewhere else and you don't get the reactions you were expecting like you're invisible, your content is invisible. It feels like it's like the needle in the haystack of the fairy tale, you know, it's really frustrating. And things have changed a lot since, well, I created my first blog on personal growth back when I still wasn't clear about my, my shift from architecture, you know, into personal growth and business and all that. I created a blog. It was, I think, 2006, around that time. And it was, it was wonderful. You just posted something on your blog and you would notice people coming and noticing your articles. It was cool, but that's, that's nothing, nothing is like that anymore. Now you write an article, you post it on your blog, and crickets. Nobody sees that. <laughs> you yeah, need to it's because it. it's one of you know a million blog posts that were posted today, you know, or something like that. Exactly. It's just there's there's been a dramatic increase in content online, and so it's much easier to just be yeah, you have your content fall onto the wayside rather than before, like yeah. you said, we were really lucky 10, 15 years ago, right? But now it's yes. not the case anymore, yeah. No, it's not. So we need to be intentional about sharing what we create. But then there is another problem. We say, okay, let's, let's find out about that. How do we do share our content in a way that, and then you, the most typical thing is you come up with those manipulative te tactics, techniques, fear-based uh, strategies, and it's like, oh my, I, I cannot do that. It feels so gross. And I'm not the type of woman that just waits. I'm, I'm very impatient. <laughs> but using all those techniques doesn't feel good. So we're really kind of trapped. And... Um, what if, and that's a question I've been asking myself again and again for several years, like what if we could um, 
maybe adjust some of those tactics or find others that really feel good to our hearts, you know? And instead of just saying, no, 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 just pure, bribe everything and forget and if I attract them, why don't we become a bit more conscious about our communication style and apply some techniques that are in integrity with who we are? So this is going to be the, <laughs> the topic that I want to share with you. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I will be weaving some depth psychology principles in, in right. this yes. interview. So the first thing that was a true revelation to me, I, I had an experience of that and you probably also had, have you ever said to yourself, I don't have the mind, the, the mind with the mental bandwidth anymore to deal with this because you're like with too many things going on. And it's like, wow, you might be searching for your car keys and can't find them and they're in yeah. front of you. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's become uh, more and more easy to be overwhelmed in the online world, particularly yes. because of, uh, yes. well, the, the massive amounts of content, but also the mass, the, the great number of strategies that we could use. Yes. Yeah. And all the different channels that we yes. might be right. can look at. So, and the mind knows that mental energy, and this is the principle I was going to share. The first one, mental energy is a limited resource. So when we are overwhelmed, the mind just does one thing, shuts down. <laughs> and only focuses on the things that are really relevant to us and ignores the rest. So somebody could be just scrolling through the feed or maybe you could be scrolling through the feed and something shows up that would be exactly what you need and you don't even notice. You don't pay attention because it's like, it's not clear. So your mind says, oh, just ignore that, ignore that. It's so sad, don't you think? Really sad. Yeah, I, I, I agree. It's... Um... Yeah, because of all the things we can see in the environment, you know, we only, our, our mind has to prioritize the resources, the energy to say, exactly. only see, only see, not even to, not even ignoring sometimes. We just, we, we didn't even see it. You know, a lot of times, you know, I've heard people say, oh, I didn't see that yet. Oh, yeah. maybe the second or third time they saw it. But, but yes, it's like, yeah. So how, how, how do we make sure people see it when, we, when they're scrolling? Yeah. But before I get into that, I'll, yes. I'll give three tips on how mm -hmm. we can do that. Okay. I want to share with, with you and with our listeners uh, the two places I've discovered that most people in my experience really struggle with that. And please reframe this not as a manipulation technique or anything. It's just clearing the static in our communications with those who really need our work and value who we are. Okay. So those two places are the first one when we are talking about our work or writing about it in our website, people are really struggling with that. Like, mm, I just, somebody asked me, oh, what do you do? And then I say, oh, I do this and that. And it's like, maybe you're not invisible because you're in front of them, but you really feel misunderstood. They don't really understand what it is you're, so they kind of ignore you or polite. Oh yeah, yeah, and then. So that's the first place. And there's one, one thing connected to our personality type that um, it's influencing many of us. And, and it's the reason why people cannot understand what it is that we do. We are not explaining it correctly. And it's connected to our personality preferences, another thing connected to that psychology, okay? And it's, it's this, most healers, holistic practitioners, coaches, people who work in personal growth, most of us, pay attention to a specific type of thing. And we communicate from the way, in the same way that we gather information. Okay, there are two ways. One is intuition, the other one is sensation. Okay, I, I have intuition as my preference as well. So I know <laughs> I had to train myself to do exactly this yeah. thing. That I'm, I'm sorry, what was your other one? The intuition and what? Sensation. Sensation, great, got it, got it. Yeah. So like uh, physical senses, right? Exactly, it's connected to the physical senses. Mm -hmm. So people who have intuition as their preference, because we can do both things, but one, it feels more natural, like writing with our dominant hand, okay? So those who use intuition, just think about possibilities, use very spiritual inspired language. We communicate from the upper chakras, <laughs> but only 25% of the population uses that style. And even those who, who share that style with us, 
and they need something more tangible before they really connect with with the message okay so what's something that when you're using intuition what is the other thing you need to do well sensation is about everything we can hear we can see we can touch so don't take this as don't use your inspirational language yes use it but blend it with sensation with something tangible tangible and let me give you an example so it really gets you know more grounded into our consciousness so inspirational language this is an example it could be like i help my clients live live up to their highest potential it's so inspiring but if somebody could imagine that in their in their minds you know with their mind's eyes what's that what will that look like in reality in their day-to-day -day life it's very difficult so you you can say that and combine it with the tangible thing in their life that it will be like for example i will help you realize your potential by finding a job in which you will feel really happy work is something more tangible or i will help you lose weight or something that can be seen, touched, more solid, more grounded. So if you do that. Yeah, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. And I, I think also in part because money typically buys us a lot of tangible things. And we connect, we buy groceries, <laughs> we buy housing, <laughs> it's very tangible. <laughs> you know? And so it's like we, we are used to spending money on things we can touch and feel, you know, phones <laughs> or whatever. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, now I'm spending money on something that's intangible. Well, what am I going to get? What is, what's going to happen here? So yes, mm -hmm. thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So that's to the first thing. And the other, the other place in which people struggle with their communication is when they create content. And as I said before, you could be creating something and people really, their minds don't tell them, hey, look at that, notice that. So it gets completely ignored. Okay. So now let me flip my mind map and continue with three things we can do that feel really good to your heart. Well, I want to say anything that I share, please uh, filter it through your heart and, and notice how it makes you feel, in, both in your heart and your gut. Like, would I be able to do this? and sleep soundly at night. <laughs> yes, I, I really appreciate you saying that because that's what authentic marketing is. Exactly. It's, it's, it's come, it feels right to us. It, it's right for our personality type, like you said, so thank you. Yeah, okay. So three things I will be comparing, again, the typical old fashioned business strategies, strategies with what we can really do that feels good. So first thing is, instead of adding to the noise with your content, make sure that you are relevant to them. Because here again, there is another principle that we pay attention to what we need. As you said before, the mind really is telling you, oh, look at that, you need that right now. Oh, that will help you solve your problem right now. So talk about what they're going through. And I, I don't know about you, George, but many people have told me, oh no, but I don't want to be negative. That, that's been negative. Hmm, I don't agree with that exactly because depending on how you talk about their, their real life, their, their situation, what they're going through right now, it can be profoundly healing. When you're going through something and somebody just describe it as it is without adding any more pain or exaggerating things. No, no, just as it is. And you read that or you hear that, it makes you feel like you're not so alone. Other people have struggled with that and there are solutions and it's like, oh, I'm not screwed, you know? It's not yeah, that I'm, not I'm, weird I'm wrong. And, and exactly. I feel seen. Exactly, right? yeah, it's so completely. healing. Yes. 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 So be relevant by talking about what's interesting to them in the moment, what they care about in the moment, and don't be afraid to talk about their struggles with compassion and empathy and authenticity, of course. Okay. So that's the first one. In, instead of adding to the noise, uh, be relevant. 
The second one is, instead of using manipulation, focus on connection. And how can we do that? The best way I know of, George, is sharing stories. I'm sure you've heard that. Um, I have one of the memories I treasure the most about my childhood is when in, in summertime we used to go to my parents' town and all the neighbors uh, used to bring their chairs to the street and sit down at night and, and just chat with each other and share stories about other people and things from the past. It, it bonded us so much. I still cherish those moments. So sharing stories is really powerful. And on top of that, our minds are wired for a story. <laughs> From millennia, you know, we've been gathering around fire, the fire, or, uh, you know, in groups to share stories. So it's something people will value and they will remember you. They will remember their story more than anything you can teach them. Okay, so focus on building connection. And the third thing that is one of my favorite topics, <laughs> I must say, because then you probably will need to tell me, okay, enough, enough, stop about that. <laughs> Instead, of using alarm and fear, focus on what makes you different. Because again, there is another mental principle that, that tells us that the mind will notice anything that's different. But yeah, conventional marketing just says, oh, cause fear. Um, and I want to read a couple, <laughs> a couple emails I received. This is true. These are real samples I got from my inbox, okay. So one of them was like this, how to captivate your clients. I don't want to captivate anyone. <laughs> Feels so gross. And the other one, oh, they, I think this is the, the top of the scary ones. The Armageddon of digital businesses. Yeah. You know, th this, is, oh. this is an age old trick, right? Because our human yes. evolution has been, we came from, you know, the savannas and the forest where we have to be very aware of danger. And True. that's what we pay attention to. And, and still today, I mean, look at, look at the news media. It's like, exactly. you know, uh, recently I was um, listening to some, some futurists talk about the state of the world and their futurists know that, and historians know that the, the state of the world is so much better than it was 50 years ago or 100 years ago i mean by almost every metric like life expectancy and um you know uh even environment i mean i know climate change but but lots and lots of you know uh, birth rates and everything it's like the state of the world is so much better but we don't hear that all we hear is doom and gloom because the news media yeah. knows that if you use fear uh or anger uh, and the negativity things we all pay attention we, <laughs> we want more and so thank you for saying that. And so being different. All right. So how, how yeah. can we be different without using fear or anger or you know, alarm? Yeah. Thank you for that question, George. Um, it takes, let me tell you, it takes a bit of time and mm. work of self-knowledge. Self mm. You need to understand who you are before you can be conscious about sharing that with others. So it requires a bit of time, but there are many ways. And, and there is not just like a one uh, formula for that. People can find different things, but let me, let me give you some examples. We could, for example, look at our past. If you look at my bio, I'm an architect, and I also studied that psychology, and it's like a weird mix. <laughs> Many times I, I say, I used to build houses, now I build brands. And people is like, oh, now I get what you do, and they remember me for that. So it could be that. Maybe you, you, you've been a swimmer and, and, and won a medal. I don't know, something really significant that you did in your past could be your differentiator now, blended with what you do now. That's one way. Another thing could be your personal style. And archetypes work really well there. I, I like to use them also to understand my clients in a much deeper way, but it's also a good way to to see how your, your mindset is different from everybody else. And then you will speak, as we said before, not just with the intuition and sensation, but let's say uh, you see the world as a warrior. You will use lots of words <laughs> connected to competition and winning and putting effort. And 
if you don't know that, your, your message could be like, you know, out of integrity, but if you're aware of that, or maybe you're a nurturer and you use a more gentle and caring and compassionate language, and then you can share that message and everything you do, even the name of your products around that. So that could be another way, okay? And then at times, your difference comes because you do something for a specific group of people that nobody else does it for them, or you blend two completely unrelated tools. So there are different ways, and it depends on the person. There is not just one right formula. So I, I like to guide them to look at their past and their achievements and their personality types and their, you know, and then from all of that, notice which one has more energy in the person. Like, oh, I really, I, I really could show up with those two elements that nobody else is using. And then you will stand out naturally just by being you. It's effortless. Yeah. It feels great. Oh. It's it's great. I, I I love that, and I love that you your background, you you combine a coaching, uh, your, your coaching training, with this these ideas of branding, and so essentially you're helping your clients um, come to an understanding of their of their of the uniqueness of their experience, and then you also you're you're a good wordsmith. I mean, you're a good copywriter, so you help your clients figure out the right words to use that yeah. is a good fit for them and will interest their their audience. Yeah, the resonant language, because George, I don't know yes. if you can speak Spanish, but if I start speaking Spanish, Barely. that's my mother tongue, you wouldn't be able to understand me if you don't know the language. So by me speaking English, is that manipulation? No, it's respect. It's being willing to connect. So just find the resonant language that will that that you naturally speak but your clients naturally understand and you need to do a bit of work before you figure that out but it's so much worth it it feels so authentic and, and so joyful it's like you feel validated too because then it's like oh who i am is is valuable it, this work is it's all about self-acceptance the core of it it's self-acceptance so it's it's really deep and really joyful when you see somebody who really just connects with that and oh, okay, yeah. this is who I am, and I can be open about that. Mm. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah, I, I wow. <laughs> wow. Um, so those of you who are watching, if you're interested, you know, contact Charo because uh, she can help you to clarify what your message is and uh, how to differentiate that. So Charo, how do people work with you? Tell us about that. Uh, well, I've, I've created something for them to get a taste. If you don't mind that I share that. Yes, uh, please. Something. It's fun for me. Um, I created that because it was really fun. I created a quiz, a self-assessment that people can take to, to discover what's there right now because that can shift. But right now, this moment, who are you? What's your paradigm? How are you looking at the world? And how is people seeing you? And you don't even need that you don't even know. So I've created a quiz. It's called They Discover Your Difference, Chris, so uh, what makes you different. They can go to my website, to the link I gave you, or they can type discoveryourdifference.com and that will show up again. again. And, and they can take the quiz. And, and they will get a PDF with a full description of the, the archetype that is most active in them right now. Okay? Mm. And they will get lots of insights mm. on how they can start to communicate in a much more authentic way. So that's, that's, that's the first step they can take. And, and they can also go and read about personality types. I write a lot about understanding yourself in my blog. So that's something they can probably also go in and take Wonderful. a look at. Well, and let's say somebody wants to work with you directly. You work with people one-to-one, -one, is yes. that right? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Good. So people can contact you for that. Well, yes, I will yes, be sure, absolutely. of course, to put the link to the quiz as well as to your website. Uh, in the notes of the video, and I just, you know, if, if anyone here has questions for Charo, please comment below. I'll make sure she sees it. And um, thank you so much for your work, Charo. Really appreciate what oh. you do for people. Thank you, George. It was really fun yeah. being here. Thank, thank you. you.